Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Hey, Cat. Hey, Moose. Hey, Sarah. Hello. How's everyone doing on this fine evening? Well, I feel like I am coming in so hot. <laughs> mm. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, tell us what happened right before you came to this <laughs> microphone. Oh, let's just say I'm wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. Girl, you did get dressed up for the podcast. I, I got. I went to a party today. You got your podcast shirt on. I got my podcast shirt uh- on. Mm-hmm. I just have two words for you, and you need to have two words back for me. Oh, well, okay. No pressure. Okay. And you only have two seconds to say the two words. Okay. It's a game. It's, it's a game the, that we've the made game up. The game of twos. Got it. Ready? Go. Angel Envy. Now your turn. One, two. Bourbon Brewing. Oh my. Those are mine. <laughs> I, I so what were you up to today? Were you out on the town? Well, I, I mean <laughs> I was at Mazatlan in Brentwood. If <laughs> that's being out on the town. <laughs> Wait, it just seems odd to be drinking bourbon at at a Mexican restaurant. Now, this is where things, this is how rumors get started, okay? (laughs) Okay, okay, good. good. I love rumors. (laughs) I just texted something to our group thread so that I could remember to talk about it on the podcast. And um, and today I went to a retirement party for a lady who um, has been a licensed massage therapist for over 30 years and was one of my instructors was the academic advisor at my school. She was co-owner of my school and she has recently retired. So today was her retirement um, celebration at this Mexican restaurant. So there was a whole group of us who know and love her who went there to celebrate her today. And um, as you guys know, (laughs) during COVID, while we were all working really hard at our regular jobs, um, Moose, you and I were also being schooled. You were becoming a coach. I was becoming a licensed massage therapist. And so we got to experience not only the beginning of our podcast starting the the month before COVID, but, um, but also like new communities. And so this community that I have so, I'm so, so grateful that, um, this community has come into my world of body workers. A lot of them really love the podcast. (laughs) And so the podcast got talked about a lot today, like in, in, uh, different moments and, and some of the, we've got some requests of things to talk about. And, um, one of the things that we were talking about was somehow we got on the subject of what we all like to drink. And one of my former instructors said, I really enjoy bourbon. And I was like, Oh yeah. my gosh, like, tell me about the bourbons that you like. So we had this whole conversation about bourbon because I too enjoy bourbon and four roses is my favorite. And I have the like basic low end four roses that I use for making like mixing stuff with bourbon. And then I've got the super high end single barrel for sipping. So I just, I love four roses. And we talked about that and she was telling me this story about a whiskey that moose, I believe you and producer Sarah got me for my birthday. I believe it was a year or two ago called angels envy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't know if maybe you got into that and, and like a parking lot and needed <laughs> rescued because this message you sent had no other description. And we were all like, is this an SOS? Do we need to call 911? <laughs> is that your new stripper name? I don't know. <laughs> Angel's Envy is a good stripper name. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, so so we were talking about how much she enjoyed bourbon and she was telling me this story about how I guess when bourbon is filtered or fermented or what I, I don't know what the processes are that it goes through, but apparently Um, what happens typically, and this is specifically in Kentucky, because that's where bourbon is made. Mm -hmm. Um, So if if a whiskey is to be called a bourbon, it has to be from Kentucky. And so anyway, she was saying that when they take this, this bourbon through a certain process, it creates steam. 
And a lot of times the bourbon makers say that that steam is for the angels. Right. It's like the bourbon is for the humans down on the earth and the steam is for the angels where there's one kind of bourbon that they don't make that way. And they actually like encapsulate the steam and they keep the steam in the same container that like the bourbon is being fermented or boiled or whatever happens to it. And so they call that steam that is captured and not allowed into the atmosphere Angel's Envy. Mm. And that's how Angel's Envy whiskey got its name is because normally the the steam from the whiskey is for the angels and it's like, ooh, the angels really want this one, but they can't get it because they keep it um, encapsulated. Well, and I don't know that I would want to keep alcohol from angels like <laughs> is that gonna come back and and bite you in the ass later yeah it's really possible and so I, <laughs> i've decided i'm not drinking angels envy anymore i'm gonna apologize no. to all the angels i'm just gonna <laughs> let like bottles of bourbon be open outdoors and go come come all the angels <laughs> calling all angels <laughs> i mean i love i love the idea but also like i don't think i want to piss off uh-uh. the angels no i don't want to piss off any you angels. Know? i don't want to piss off anybody buddy (laughs) well i'm i do a little bit i just i wanted to correct you on one thing publicly if that's okay oh well it's it sounds like it's gonna happen so being being a resident from kentucky i too thought that that's what made something a bourbon is that it had to be made in kentucky but do you remember when we were at the podcast convention in Nashville Mm -hmm. and at like 9 47 (laughs) AM we went, (laughs) we went over to the Jack Daniels thing and we were like, Oh, what's this? And they're like, we're doing a tasting in 10 minutes. And we were like, fantastic. Can we sign up? Yeah. Um, first three people on that list. Might I add? Yeah, we were, (laughs) I mean, it was a convention, so it's like an airport. Like time doesn't matter. Um, but bourbon is always whiskey. But whiskey is not always bourbon. Bourbon has important distinctions that differentiate it from whiskey. I'm totally reading this, just so everybody knows. Um, It has to be made in the United States from at least 51% corn. Hmm. Be aged in new charred American white oak barrels, and the finished product must be 80% proof. Hmm. So it has nothing to do with Kentucky? Well, I, 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 hold on. I'm, Goog- I'm Googling because I, I remember looking this up and it said it was a myth. Oh. Bourbon doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. Here's what it says. Um, <laughs> no, this is not working for me. Like this, like <laughs> real time, like wiki bullshit is not working hey. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I think producer Sarah needs to dive into that bourbon conversation. Yeah, there we go. Making work for producer Sarah. That's fantastic. Whiskies are made by distilling a fermented grain mash. These mashes may include wheat, rye, barley, and corn, among others. Bourbon is unique, though. To be called a bourbon, the liquor must, A, be made in the United States. 95% of bourbon comes from Kentucky, but it technically can be made anywhere in the USA. The water distilling the best bourbons must be filtered through limestone, and Kentucky has a lot of limestones. Kentucky is the only state with a perfect natural mix of climate, conditions, and pure limestone water necessary for producing the world's most excellent bourbon. The limestone adds minerals like calcium which helps the yeast used to make bourbon. Limestone also filters out impurities, most importantly, and most notably iron which gives liquor an awful taste. B. Contain at least 51% corn in the fermented grain mash. Usually, it is much higher. A typical mash might consist of 80% corn, 10% of a flavoring grain, and 10% malted barley. It varies depending on the distillery and the specific product, but the precise breakdown is known as the mash bill. C must be distilled to no more than 80% alcohol by volume, or 160 proof, and must be no more than 62.5% ABV, or 125 proof, when it enters the barrel. D. And most importantly, it must be stored in brand new, charred, oak barrels. It is these barrels and the charring that give bourbon its unique characteristics. This means the barrel can be used only once for bourbon. 
When the bourbon is aged in barrels, the liquid expands into and shrinks back out of the wood due to temperature changes. Reference, bourbonbrothers.com. I mean, this is so true. And it makes me feel like um, I, I I don't know if it's so much of an apology or an admission of um, guilt. Lack, <laughs> guilt. Absolute <laughs> guilt. <laughs> Um, my bodywork therapist and I were having a conversation a few weeks ago and I was trying to say something along the lines of like, you know, the whole Kentucky bourbon thing or whatever. And she was like, well, but whiskey is whiskey. And I was like, well, scotch is not whiskey. Like scotch is different. She was like, yes, it is like scotch is whiskey. And I'm like, okay, it doesn't taste anything like bourbon to me. And so I don't think it's whiskey. And she's like, it's from Scotland. Like it's Scotch whiskey. And I was like, Oh, like Irish whiskey. It's that's from Ireland. So it sounds like we are again, a fact finding podcast. (laughs) Well, I think we need to invite our shared friend, Brian, Mm. you know, Brian. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, he is a whiskey slash Scotch slash tequila slash, et cetera. Um, alcohol connoisseur. I think he's I think he's an alcohol connoisseur is what I'm getting at. So maybe we can interview him and um or maybe someone else listening is like you fools have yes. me on. Yes, we would love to hear from you telling us how much we don't know about what it is that we talk about. You can call us at 1866KATM005 or email us hello at catandmoosepodcast.com. Anyway, I was at a party today for a lady named Mary, and I got to hang out with a bunch of our listeners, one of whom we have recently learned has proclaimed her love for the Cat and Moose podcast in a way that I have not fully known how to receive. Oh. And she tattooed... The Cat and Moose podcast tattoo on her arm. And I have never, (laughs) I have never felt so honored in my life and also felt so unworthy. Like, like guys, like we are tattooed on her body. I don't feel unworthy. I did that for a long time. I absolutely feel worthy. I mean, I'm not saying I feel worthy that my name or nickname should be on someone's arm. I hear what you're saying. That is amazing and fantastic. Does that mean we've like made it? Like well, at that point, I, I I was at a meeting um, earlier this week with a friend who I love, near and dear friend who I just haven't gotten to connect with in a really long time, and she said to me, she's like, you know, hey, it seems like things are going really good with you guys' podcast, and I said, it really is like things are going great, like we're getting more and more listeners, and we're getting close to that mark where like advertisers want to start paying to like, you know, be mentioned on our podcast. And, um, and I said, and I said, we have a listener who tattooed our logo on her body and she just threw her hands up and she was like, you've made it. You've absolutely made it. I, I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. And honestly, if said tattooed person who we love and adore would like to get more, I do have a friend who is an incredible <laughs> Uh, animator who has made other images of cat and moose. If you want to get more and make a full sleeve. I, I, I would like to publicly discourage that because I have not gotten to a place where I emotionally could deal with more than one tattoo, including my name on someone's body. Like I still don't feel worthy of that. So I've got some work to do and it sounds like it really isn't a good time for me to take a break from talk therapy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey, I, have you quit officially or are you still hanging in there? Um, I am I like, like my therapist and I have had some really good, healthy conversations about it. And, um, and I think I'm at that place that at least for a season, I'm going to take a break. So, um, yeah. I haven't quote unquote officially, um, stop talk therapy for the season. And this week I think is going to be our last appointment together, at least for some time. So, um, Okay, let's role play because, I mean, if you're not going to have therapy for a while, <laughs> we need to practice something, right? And so so you're sitting there and there you are face to face. Are you on Zoom or are you in real person? Oh, in person. Okay, so you're face to face. There's even more energy in the room because you're together. 
And what if at the end of like your last conversation, she looks at you and says, you can't, you can't quit, 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 quit. Then what? <laughs> First of all, I really can't imagine her ever doing that. <laughs> Look, man, things happen. And I am here to prepare the rest of the world for potential uh, snaggles in life. We don't want to hit any snaggles or snu- snuggles. <laughs> okay. Would be nice, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would love to hit as many snuggles as possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think she would ever say that to me. And I am willing to play this game with you. Okay. So, I, so I'll be her. Kat, I understand that this is the decision that you've chosen to make, but. You can't quit me. I'm not quitting you. It sure sure feels feels like it. Would you like to tell me more about those feelings? No, I want you to stay. Why do you want me to stay? Because you're fun and you have a podcast. (laughs) Then what, Kat? Don't leave me hanging. I don't know. (laughs) At that point, I'll just be like, cool, I'll see you in two weeks. (laughs) See, this is what I'm afraid of. You have quit in your mind, but you haven't officially quit. (laughs) So we need an update next week if there's any more scheduled on the books, okay? Okay. Some people have to quit alcohol like I did. Other people have to quit therapy. (laughs) This is not, I'm not like quitting because something's wrong. Like I'm not quitting. I totally agree. As if it's like an addiction or a problem. It was a bad example. (laughs) No, I feel like I have actually like evolved enough for the time being. And I want to just exist in this space for a minute. Like I want to just go like, what does it feel like to just do life like on my own for a minute? And, and it, it might be horrifically terrible. And I'm, I am willing and able, no, I don't know if I'm able, I'm willing to face that i'm willing to face that i'm totally messing with you i think it's fantastic i i have months where i'm like maybe i don't need therapy every two weeks and by that time that second week rolls around i'm like what day of the week is (laughs) but like i literally i'm like looking at my calendar crawling to that day so for me, I think I might spread it out to three weeks at some point and then go from there. It's, you know, it's like quitting that medication that I got back on. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that go? No, I'm just talking about the ones I, you know about them where it fell apart. And then I put it back together <laughs> with tape. No, I know. I know about them a lot. I was just kind of, as you were looking for an update from me, I'm looking for an update from you. How's it going? Oh, Well, my sister was in town this past weekend for her birthday, and that was super fun. Um, And, you know, she's a massage therapist as well, and she was very excited about something for you. But we can't say that yet. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway. (laughs) What does that mean? Well, I don't know if Kat's probably going to share that. Mm. Are you? I mean, I have it on my list of things to talk about. Yeah. Well, do you want to share it here so we can just celebrate you? Well, <laughs> I am I am so happy to celebrate it here with you. If there's anybody I want to celebrate it with, it's you guys and it's my family. And you are my family. You're my chosen family. And um, this past week, I passed the massage board licensing examination, better known as the Imblex. Woo! I passed it this Woo! week. Freaking proud of you. Thank you. We celebrated with you last week and and I'm just so excited. It's so fun to see like the culmination of all of that time you put in. Thank you so much. Thank you for celebrating me. And I will walk all of my paperwork for licensure um, down to a building in downtown Nashville this Tuesday afternoon. And the reason I haven't done that yet is I was going through all my paperwork for licensure and I realized, oh no, I have to get a background check. And so I have to get a background check on Tuesday afternoon and they're requiring me to give fingerprints. And so I'm just worried that that one time, remember when I got arrested for my license plate being expired? (laughs) Yeah, I do. do. I'm wondering if that's going to be on my record. 
You also <laughs> went through a season <laughs> in our 20s where like every time you went home to visit your mom, you would get a speeding ticket in these small towns. Yeah. And then you just wouldn't show up to court. Right. Right. <laughs> and then I eventually got arrested for it. <laughs> Yeah, right before I was picking up a client from the airport. <laughs> yeah, freaking Wilson Phillips 2.0, man. I know, I know, that was crazy. But thank you for celebrating me. And I hope that I haven't gotten this far to be denied. <laughs> like, that would be I don't so th- I don't think that that's going to be what they're looking for on your on your report. Um, but what I wanted to share was, my sister was very excited for you because she knows what that's like, and she teaches... Um, massage classes now and i don't know if they're called massage classes what are they called cat well i mean i went to school and took classes so yeah i mean they're called massage classes but there's also clinical practicum yeah she does mm-hmm. clinics yeah so anyway my sister's in town we went to a billy joel and elton john cover <laughs> band on friday nice. night nice that sounds amazing it was so fun i had to practice being calm <laughs> around family which isn't (laughs) something i'm great at anyway my sister's a huge billy joel and i'm a huge elton john fan but um it was her birthday and we get this table and i just start talking to her as soon as we sit down like can we talk about how much excitement is going to be happening because i would like to control your excitement (laughs) why (laughs) because i don't like a lot of attention on us and my sister has and, you know, I talk about social self and essential self. I don't think my sister has a social self and it panics me. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just that she's so realized in her essential self that she has like kind of graduated the social self. I don't think my sister's ever given a shit and created a social self. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's more healthy than the rest of us. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like she literally is the only person in my life I can say doesn't give a shit. (laughs) I mean, does not give a shit, you know? And so I knew that too. I was walking into this event with, and then they put us right up next to the stage and, you know, Sarah just sang her heart out with Alicia and I sang a few notes as well myself. Um, but it was, uh, great. Great. It was great. It actually was really fun. Mm -hmm. That sounds like so much fun. And it reminds me of, um, you know how, like, I I feel like this with you guys and I'm, I'm going to take a stretch, a leap of faith here and say that maybe you feel the same around me. Um, I, I feel like around each other, we don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. totally like we're able to be our essential selves with one another so much so that we can report it and put it out on like (laughs) the internet um and and so i had a moment with producer sarah this week where she exhibited behavior of i don't give a shitness and i was really really entertained by it and sarah are you cool if we talk about it i can't remember what it is but yeah man (laughs) can't wait to that's how much you did not give a shit is that you don't even remember how much of an impact this had on me so um sarah has been really awesome and helpful in so many ways in my life and lately tangibly what that has looked like outside of the podcast is sarah is really skilled with towing things behind her car and so it's not a euphemism (laughs) do not worry it totally sounds like that means something else Sarah is good at towing something behind her car. (laughs) Okay. So we're, we're, Sarah is helping me go to, um, the Marine where the mechanics work that fix my boat. My boat has had a couple of issues this summer and I've had to take it in twice. And, and before I would hire somebody to take my boat in and Sarah like kind of raised her hand and she was like, I like, I know how to do things like that. And so she and I have kind of bonded in an even more special way this summer and that she She's been helping me um, get my boat to and from and in and out of the water and stuff like that. And so anyway, we're on our way to pick up my boat at this um, at this place where the mechanic dudes are. And Sarah holds up this packet that's like, you know, about a two by four inch packet that's got a Ziploc seal at the top. And she just kind of waves it in front of me and she goes, you want one? And I was like, I I don't, I don't know what that is. And so she reaches into the packet and pulls out one of those disposable (laughs) toothbrushes, like the little, like 
the little like three inch toothbrush. And then I realized the packet says like Colgate, you know, whatever, whatever disposable pick and tooth, toothbrush or whatever it is. And I said, well, Sarah, I said, no, I don't think I do want one of those. And so she gets hers out and she starts like brushing her teeth like this. And she goes, well, do you, do you mind if I do? And I said, well, you're already doing it. So like, even if I minded if you were doing it, like you're brushing your teeth while we are talking in the car on the way to pick up my boat. And the whole time she was like, yeah, and then, and then, hang on a second. <laughs> hang on. And, and like, I was like going, okay, like this is not socially okay. <laughs> and the fact that it was so socially okay because it was the two of us together totally. like made me feel so <laughs> happy that like there was a moment that at least to me, I perceived is Sarah was really able to be her essential self. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I love that. And I, <laughs> I feel like that was, that happened in the early days of my friendship with her too, as an offering <laughs> of a tiny toothbrush that she keeps in her car. They're great guys. And these aren't used. They're disposable. They've got a little thing that pops in the middle and it's like minty. <laughs> they got a little, little piece of mint in there that you got to take yeah. your tooth and click it in there. Yeah. It's great. I do love that. And it does say a lot about your guys' friendship because <clears throat> mm -hmm. if I was thinking there's not many people that I would pretty much do anything with, you know, like, and to me, anything means like it could result in me pooping my pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you guys are my crew as far yeah. as that goes. There's a handful of others, you know, but like. Yeah, I would even do ayahuasca with you guys. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like peyote, ayahuasca, um, shrooms, like the whole, all the stuff that we've talked about. <laughs> but we've never done it. We Just to be clear. No, we've never <laughs> done it. And and, that, and and maybe we never will. And maybe we may. And if so, like that, that is just for the future to unfold. And, you know, I'm sure the whole world will hear about it if we do it. I mean, oh, it's yeah. kind of like Chelsea Handler. It's like she did ayahuasca yeah. and put it on TV, you know, and I'm like, well, oh, yeah. you know, sometimes we do have a friend who is great at video production and might although they might want to participate too but it could be interesting if the person filming also <laughs> was on shrooms as well so we're yeah, seeing we're really seeing our experiences through her experience <laughs> yeah oh maybe she's the only one on shrooms <laughs> could be great if you guys are okay with it i'd like to make that invitation because i'm going to see her later tonight <laughs> yes i would absolutely love that okay 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 i have to share something just on that note of of just what we've been talking about and the the friendship that we have but like the, the safety in the community mm -hmm. yeah you know and cat this may be on your notes and so all of us in fact please contribute if you would like but uh moose bought a new uh water toy shall i say <laughs> Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know they Wait made those minute. waterproof. <laughs> you know what? I can say that about... <laughs> yeah, you said Sarah's good at towing things. Oh, this is getting dirty. And now I have a water toy. I did not buy a water toy. I don't know why you're calling it that. It's called a S... It's a recreational... It's a called a stand-up paddleboard. <laughs> But what, what category would you put that in? In stand-up paddle boards. Okay, well, anyway, she bought a stand-up... <sighs> Moose bought a new stand-up paddle board. <laughs> Not a water toy. It goes in the water, and it's recreational. And anyway, I have been wanting to try one for so long, and I've heard that it's super hard, and it's like lot of work on your core and like you got to hold your balance and all this stuff and so I text Kat the other day and was like could we bring over the paddle board and try it out for the first time in your pool mm -hmm. and Kat said yes <laughs> great and so we did that one afternoon and it was so fun and just 
mind blowing. And Kat and I had an opportunity to really talk about this when we were hanging out doing boat things. Uh, the boat transportation. <laughs> but but uh, it was really special because it, we got to connect on the fact that we both were able to bring that experience into our individual therapy sessions that week and how much it meant to us individually and how much of that was like very similar and crossed over and um we're talking about all of this stuff and how it's like we are not afraid to brush our teeth in front of someone while they're telling us a story on the way to pick up something and it was on my mind so much after we all did that together that I wrote down some notes in my journal prior to my therapy session and I wrote words like fun play confidence scene and you know these are things that like you're afraid to even get on the board because what you your body might fail or you might fall and what does that feel like and someone might laugh at you or whatever and like to be able to trust your people Mm -hmm. and your community my therapist said doing it together removes the shame oh Mm. wow wow your therapist said that Yes, and I wrote that down after all. I mean, there was so much conversation around it, but, like, that is such a great sum for me, like, summary of just doing it together, having this community. It removes shame from whatever you're doing. It yeah. could be any event. It could be a fun thing, a really hard thing, or whatever it is to be able to be, to share um, honestly and in vulnerability mm-hmm. um, with your people. There's no shame there, you know? Yeah. And it makes sense. Like why community is so important. It's like we build community around our belief systems. We build community around our, our political views. We build community around our hobbies. We build community around uh, the things that we find fascinating or important or whatever. And, and, and very similarly, Sarah, like I shared, um, and this was actually in my body work session, I shared that I felt like in that experience of learning how to get up on the paddleboard, stand up on it and being able to actually stand there and hold myself steady for several moments in time. Um, one of the things that I loved about it is that when I got up for the third time and was able to feel really steady on the board, I held the oar up in the air and I've got all these internal family systems parts that are, uh, thank God I developed them before I understood internal, internal family family systems because they're not they're not technically right or okay but (laughs) it works for me so um anyway I stood up with that oar and I said I am an Indian and what happened was the three of you in the pool clapped and you said yes you are and then I was like wait a minute an Indian is not one of my parts I don't think at least I don't know that guy yet and so then I was like wait I'm a tiger I'm a red phoenix like I'm all the things and you guys were like yeah and then I felt off the paddleboard and I hit myself in the pelvic bone like on the pelvic bone on the front like tip of the paddleboard. I did not know that happened. <laughs> yes. And one of our friends, our other friend that was with us said, well, you sure did just fall on your 39s. Oh yeah. I noticed that. She knew the Jin Shindo point on my body that is point number 39 because I've talked about it enough around her. Yeah. That, that it, it and it's like, I just felt so seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I felt seen by all of you that you were like, whatever the, f- she's an Indian. If she's an Indian right now, let her be a, f- it's fine. I figured you were, you were touching base with some of your ancestral roots. <laughs> right. And, and I'm sure yeah. I was, I'm sure I was, but I, I felt so known by all of you. And then, and then when she was like, yeah, man, you fell on your 39s. I was like, God, <laughs> like, it's just so nice to, to yeah. be so safe and so known in a community of people. Thank you guys. Thank you for that. And thank you for, um, loving me through all of it. And it, it's really, it's fun to love you both. It's so fun. It's fun to hear you guys share this because I felt the same thing. Like I was like throwing myself up on the board and I couldn't wait to see if I could stand up. And like, I would never be that way if there was a bunch of people I didn't know mm-hmm. standing mm-hmm. around. But as you guys were talking, it made me think of this Anne Lamott quote that I just Googled and I would love to share it. And it says, Oh my God, what if you wake up someday and you're 65 or 75 
and you never got your memoir or novel written, where you didn't go swimming in those warm pools and oceans all those years because your thighs were jiggly and you had a big, nice, comfortable tummy. Or you were just so strung out on perfectionism and people pleasing that you forgot to have a big, juicy, creative life of imagination and radical silliness and staring off into space like when you were a kid. It's going to break your heart. Don't let this happen. Wow. Man. Hmm. Jiggle it I, out, guys. You know? Yeah, jiggle it out. I, I feel like this makes me think of my next door neighbor. I think maybe she reads Anne Lamont. Can I talk to you guys about this? <laughs> Please. Sure. I'd love to hear. Oh, Are great. there some jiggles happening? Well, <laughs> no, they, there aren't jiggles. There's just a willingness to be one's true self in a way that feels um, phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal. No, ph- phenomenal. Um <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say is that I live in a very established neighborhood. I have trees in my neighborhood that are probably like hundreds of years old. Like the houses have been here a long time. And a lot of the people who live here have been here a long time. And so a lot of my neighbors are elderly and um, I do not live in a retirement community, but it (laughs) sometimes kind of feels that way. And I love how quiet it is, especially being this close to downtown Nashville. Anyway, one of my neighbors, her name is Miss Martha, and she will stop when she's driving her Buick out of the driveway, (laughs) and she will go, hello, Kathy, how are you? She calls me Kathy. Oh, I'm sure you love that. Oh, yeah, and sometimes she'll call me Catherine, I guess because she's seen my envelopes that the postmaster has misdelivered. And so anyway, it's like, so Miss Martha, whenever she catches me walking my dogs, I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to be here at least 30 minutes to hear about all the neighborhood gossip. And did you know that so-and-so got taken away by an ambulance and she's back? You know, this is kind of how this goes. Wait, it's not the lady that mows her lawn across the street. No, this is a different, this is a different Mm -hmm. lady. Yeah. And so Miss Martha, who still runs and owns a dentistry place here in town um i saw her um a couple of months ago this is kind of the beginning of the summer season and she was out there with this little bitty scrubby brush and like soap a bucket of soap and water and she was scrubbing her mailbox Mm. oh why do we know i just watched from afar i just watched (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it looked like she was scrubbing bird poop off of her mailbox. And her mailbox okay. is this very bronze mailbox that has gone patina. So it's kind of got this turquoise uh-huh. blue all over it. And so about a week ago, I was taking my trash out and I looked over there and she was wrapping her mailbox in cellophane. Oh, to keep it clean for next time. Right. Wait, wait, wait. What does next time mean? Like when neighbors are coming over? Just when the birds poop again. Easier to clean up. But when do you take it off? I don't know. When it gets poopy again. And you just redo it. But then... It's probably something she saw on Pinterest. But but (laughs) you never just leave it open? It's always in cellophane? The thing is, is that the mailbox is now wrapped in cellophane... (laughs) <laughs> to keep the bird poop off of the mailbox. And it still opens for the postmaster who comes. But but now instead of the, the mailbox being tarnished by bird poop, it is now wrapped in cellophane. Okay, I'm Googling this. Maybe it's a thing. So <laughs> I, I just like, I don't know which is more unsightly is to have bird poop on your mailbox or to have your mailbox wrapped in cellophane. You can see it all the way from the end of the street. There's nothing <laughs> on on Pinterest, on Google. There's nothing. She came up with this herself. I think she did. <laughs> I think she did. It's like a mailbox condom. You know. Oh, you- my God. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in the title. That is by the way, <laughs> by the title. I freaking love this lady. And here, here's what's happened. And this is no disrespect to... Anyone over the age of 40, please hear me say that. But my mom kind of went into this thing where, like, I would be at work. Have I talked about this? I'd be at work and I would get a text and it would say, Do you eat pistachios? 
from my mom. And I'd be like, is this a joke? You know, is it like, and I'd be like, yes, I eat pistachios. Call me. <laughs> is what I would say. <laughs> so I would pick up the phone. I'm at work working. And I would call my mom and I would say, yeah, mom, something about pistachios. And she would say, turn on Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> And I would say, mom, I'm at work. And she goes, I know you're at work, but I know you have a TV in your office. Turn on Dr. Oz. And I'm like, mom, I don't have time for Dr. Oz. <laughs> and she's like, well, he says pistachios aren't great with gallbladders. And our family historically has had issue with gallbladder. So I don't think you should eat pistachios. You know what I mean? Like my mom could just uh -huh. drill down yeah. on the tiniest thing that is of annoyance or going to kill us. And it was of importance to her. Yeah. And yeah. so this lady might be reading a book out in front, you know, in her front room and watching these birds take a shit on her mailbox. Right, right. And in her mind, she is at <laughs> war yeah. with these birds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when, and like it's like uh, if you just get that laser focus. Yes. And you create the story. This is us creating stories. It's her and the birds going yeah. at it. <laughs> And the mailbox is their way of attacking her. <laughs> I think that that must be what's going on because like, like to think I'm going to get my saran wrap, my cellophane, and I'm going to walk it out. there. She also vacuums her driveway. Wait, what? What? Yeah. What about a blower? Have we thought about no, getting her no, a blower? She, she has a shop vac and she takes it out there and she vacuums her driveway. Oh, mercy. Interesting. Yeah. And so, so anyway, it just, it's been really interesting to watch from afar. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that accent, Kat. That was nice. Why, thank you. Miss Martha. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's Miss Martha's mailbox. Miss Martha's, Martha's mailbox. <laughs> Could you ever live with someone that's that anal? That is my question. Like if they expected you, cause like, you know, she's probably, if she's vacuuming her driveway, she's probably dusting her baseboards and stuff. Right. I under, I, I heard that she vacuums her walls. I've, I've heard that she's got red velvet walls and that she vacuums them. Wait. Red, red velvet. How have you walls. not brought Miss Martha to the podcast yet? Could we interview her? Oh no! Yes, we should tell her she's going to be on a podcast. No, because I think she would not understand that we're making fun of her. Well, we're not making fun of her, and I don't want to make fun of her. We're not like making it, fun of her. We want to hear her perspective. Yeah, that's true, and her voice. Yes. Yeah, we do. We're yes. going to be disappointed if it's not that good. Or you could just overdub your version of her. Yeah. Oh, I'm we could have... just have her as a guest. Yeah, we could totally wink, wink. I think we go, we get our, we, we have that zoom thing. We could put it around us and we could get like a boom mic. So we feel like we're really like legit podcasters. And then we just go knock on our door and then you would be like, Miss Martha, we have a few questions about your mailbox driveway and red velvet walls. Mm -hmm. Can we come in? Yeah. And I think she'd be like, well, sure. She would. Mm hmm. Oh, good morning, Catherine. Hi, I'm Moose. I'm, I'm with Catherine. Hey, Miss Martha. You know me. I live next door. We've we've talked before. Yes. What are you doing this morning? Yeah. So, um, I I just was here visiting my friend Cat, and I noticed your mailbox. And uh, we have this podcast, and it's um, it's a zoology slash therapy slash um, mailbox podcast and as soon as I saw your mailbox I thought would you be willing to share with us w what this method is that you are doing on your mailbox I'm, I'm a little confused what is a podcast oh it's like um do you watch Dateline no oh do you watch 2020 oh yes every Sunday night Oh, yeah. Remember Connie Chung? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I loved Connie. She was actually my mentor in New York. That's a true story. Okay. So it's like that, but only audio. So you're on 2020? No, I, was, I wasn't on 2020, but uh, Connie Chung, who you said you knew. Now, Catherine, do you know this person that's talking to me here? 
Well, I, I do. Yeah. This is my friend Moose and we do this, this podcast. And when she was driving by my house, she noticed that, um, you had your mailbox wrapped in cellophane and I have a theory, um, based on just being your neighbor and like watching, you know, kind of, we watch each other, you know, a lot of my, what I do at my house and I know what you do at your house. And, um, and so we just, we wanted to talk to our listeners about, there's probably a really good reason that you wrapped your mailbox in cellophane. And so I was just wondering if we could have a conversation about that, that we, we share with, with all of our friends, if you're cool with that. Yeah. We just like wanted to know, you know, what, why it's like got, um, like cling wrap on it. And so like, what, what is that for? Um, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but my mailbox has got a very nice turquoise patina. Now, do you know patina? Is that like when things rust? It's like when copper, it's like when copper gets uh, affected by the weather. You've got a weather vane over there on your shed. Oh, and yeah, it's she very does nice. Have one over there. Yeah, it's very nice patina. And uh, I think you ordered it that way, though. It didn't naturally get that way. Amazon. She does love Amazon. Yeah, I do, Miss Martha. I, I just, I, I saw your mailbox. I was inspired. I was like, well, if I get a weather vane that's patina, like, I thought that could be really. I love the way that you decorate and I've told you time and time again that I love your decorating style anyway the reason that I have my mailbox wrapped like this out here is because you know those crows the crows Catherine you know the crows in our neighborhood yes you know what I do they're like like they they call like they're crazy my dogs go nuts after well they shit on my mailbox but I don't say Oh, Miss Martha, I love that you like to cuss every once in a while. Well, I I did just because I know I'm safe with Catherine. She's my neighbor. and But I don't really know. Did you say your name was an animal? Oh, no. That's just the name of our podcast. Yeah, I mean, it is a nickname. I'm. They call me Moose. So this, this recording on, that goes on 2020, is my mailbox going to be on 2020? <laughs> Yeah, we have a podcast. It's it's with 2020, um, and Connie Chung is the executive producer, and so I love yeah, her. Um, I just love her. I love that when they started inviting those minorities to be priorities on television, I, that made me so happy. <laughs> minorities are pro- Amen to that, Miss Martha. I, I'm so if I turn on 2020 tonight, Sunday night, yeah, you'll I'll find see us. you. You, you'll see you. Oh, oh. You'll actually see you. Well. Yeah, you'll be on 20. Just your voice is going to be. Yeah, you'll be able to hear us on Uber Eats tonight. And your name is Moose. Moose, yeah, Moose. Do you know that Catherine sometimes, and I don't know if she knows I see this, but sometimes she gets naked in that swimming pool. <laughs> You know, I haven't personally seen it myself, but I have that rumor is on the streets of Nashville as well. Well, we have a Facebook page and it's been talked about. Oh, and what did it say about Kat? Well, it basically says there is a certain neighbor who has been known to get in her pool naked and she Um, doesn't think we can see because of all the shrubbery and trees and stuff like that, but we can see that she's naked. Well, I'm glad she just went outside so she didn't hear you say that. Yeah, I just, that's why I thought I would tell you in the privacy of this conversation. Well, what should I do about it? Should I talk to her about it? Oh, no. I mean, I think my son likes it. <laughs> All right, Miss Martha. Well, thanks for solving the mailbox mystery for us. We sure appreciate it. Well, you're so welcome. All right. We'll see you on 2020 on Uber Eats. Bye-bye. All right. Cat, she's crazy. <laughs> Special thanks to our producer, Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production.